Reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, text number 70. Apuryamanan achala pratishtam samudram apa pravishanti yadvat tadvat kama yam pravishanti sarve sashanti mapnoti na kama kami. Translation and proper by Shila Prabhupada. Translation. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flows of desires that enters like river into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can only achieve peace, and not the man who strives to satisfy such desire. Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limits of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desire because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything, is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the person, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the water of river that flows into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities. And he is not even slightly disturbed by the desire for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclination for material sense gratification, although the desires are present. Because, the, because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady like the ocean and enjoy, therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who fulfills desire even up to the limit of liberation, what we speak of material success, never attains peace. The fruity worker, the salvationist and the also the yogi who are, all, who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord and he has no desire to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires and therefore they are always in perfect peace. The sense of Bhaktivedanta purpose. So it's a very, very interesting verse. Krishna is kind of concluding this chapter of this verse is of Pragna Pratishta. Wherein Krishna started speaking about who is the person who is established in a fixed intelligence. Who is a personality who can be situated in a fixed consciousness without getting disturbed by material agitation. In this verse, Krishna is bringing very beautiful analogy, very beautiful example. He says, Apurya mananam achala pratishtam samudram apaha pravishanti. So, pragna pratishta, one of the synonyms what Krishna is using here is achala pratishtam, who is steadily situated. Who is achala pratishtam? A person who is apuryamanana, a person who is filled. Puna means apuryamanana. Apuryamanana achala pratishtam. And then he gives the example. Samudram. Samudram apa pravishanti yadvat. Yadvat means example like this. Yad, tad, like this, that is. So Krishna is using here. Samudram apaha pravishanti yadvat. 
లైక్ ద ఆపహ ద వాటర్ కమ్స్ టు ద సముద్రం లైక్ ద రివర్స్ కమ్స్ టు ద ఓషన్ లైక్ ద వాటర్ కమ్స్ టు ద ఓషన్ అండ్ ద ఓషన్ రిమైన్స్ అన్డిస్టర్బ్ సిమిలర్లీ ఏ పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ అపూర్యమాన అ పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ స్పిల్డ్ ఇన్ హిమ్సెల్ అచలా ప్రతిష్టం హీస్ అచలా ప్రతిష్టం హీస్ ఫిక్స్డ్ ఇన్ హీస్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ దెన్ ఈ సేస్ తద్వత్ కామ యా ప్రవేశంతి సర్వే సో లైక్ ద వాటర్ ఈజ్ మర్జింగ్ ఇన్ టు ద ఓషన్ సిమిలర్లీ ద కామ ద డిజైర్స్ ఈస్ ఎంటరింగ్ ఇన్ టు అపూర్యమానా అచలా ప్రతిష్టన్స్ హార్ట్ ఇన్ ద హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ అ పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ ఫిల్డ్ ఇన్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ తద్వత్ కామ యా ప్రవేశంతి సర్వే స శాంతి ఆపనోతి న కామ కామే నేను కృష్ణ సేమ్ లైక్ వి రిమైన్ అన్డిస్టర్బ్ లైక్ ద ఓషన్ రిమైన్ అన్డిస్టర్బ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్లో ఆఫ్ సో మెనీ వేవ్ సో మెనీ వాటర్ బాడీస్ ఇన్ టు ద ఓషన్ సిమిలర్లీ ఏ పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ ఫిల్డ్ అపూర్యమాన లైక్ ద ఓషన్ దే ఆల్సో రిమైన్ ద అన్డిస్టర్బ్ and what happened to this person who remain undisturbed even though so many flow of desires comes to him sa shanti maapnoti he becomes peaceful he becomes satisfied but we think that after fulfilling our desire will be satisfied how krishna is saying that will be satisfied once we don't fulfill the desire the traditional the modern understanding of the world is we can become peaceful only when we fulfill our desire i have certain desires in my mind if i achieve that then i'll be peaceful but in this verse krishna is giving a completely different understanding krishna is not saying a person who is all the desires are fulfilled only he can become peaceful what do we think that once all my desires are fulfilled then only i will become peaceful everybody wants to be peaceful and we are looking for that state in something or someone or some situation and then we think okay this is what going to make, make me peaceful let me achieve this situation in my life it can be any situation situation in my own family situation in my career situation in my financial situations or oh, let me have this person with me then i'll be peaceful but what krishna is saying is tadvat kama ya sarve pravishanti న కామ కామి స శాంతి మాపనోతి న కామ కామి కృష్ణ సేయింగ్ కంప్లీట్లీ అపోజిట్ ఓర్ కృష్ణ సేయింగ్ అ పర్సన్ హూ హ్యాస్ నో డిజైర్స్ టు బి ఫుల్ఫిల్ హీ డస్ నాట్ కేటర్స్ టు హిస్ డిజైర్స్ హీ డస్ నాట్ ఫుల్ఫిల్ హిస్ డిజైర్ హీ ఓన్లీ బికమ్ పీస్ఫుల్ నాట్ ద పర్సన్ హూ హ్యాస్ హిస్ హార్ట్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ డిజైర్స్ so how do we understand this what krishna is saying is seems to be very contradictory to what we have been understanding what we have been knowing in the world the translation says a person who is undis- not disturbed by the incessant flow of desire apuryamana achala pratishtam that enters like the river into the ocean samudram apa pravishanti yadvat but is always still can alone achieve peace sashanti maapnoti note the men who strive to satisfy such desire na kama kami so how do we understand this that we want to become happy we want to become peaceful and we have certain desires in my mind how do we make sure that those desires even though i try to fulfill it is does not agitate me so according to krishna's understanding that there is no requirement of fulfillment of those desires so why krishna is saying that but because we are full of desires we have mind we have heart and we have all those desires from so many millions of lifetimes so why krishna is saying that a person will not try to achieve that desire or he will not he will lose interest from those desires so what is that status like that at that point of time we may lose all the interest from the desire rupa says in a purport a person who is filled in himself only can 
remain undisturbed from the flow of desire. If you see the ocean, so why the ocean is undisturbed by the flow of water? Why the ocean is undisturbed because of flow of water? So many river bodies is flowing into the in the, into the ocean. So, but how the ocean can remain undisturbed? Because of the fullness of water into the ocean. Because the ocean is filled with water, because of that characteristics, because of that nature, even though so many other water bodies fall into it, it remains undisturbed. Similarly, we, if our heart is filled with happiness of Krishna consciousness, if our heart is filled with the love for Krishna, if our heart is filled with that service toward the Lord, and although we may have desires, but we will lose all the interest of fulfilling those desires. Now we have both the seeds. We have the seeds of Krishna conscious happiness and we have the seeds of material desire. As a devotee, as a aspiring devotee, we have both. We have the material desires, seeds for material desires and we have seeds for material spiritual happiness. So it is said that what you focus on grows, what you waters grows. For an example, if you put two seeds into the same land and provide same water, same sunlight, same fertile land, so both of them will grow. Based upon the types of seed, both of them will give different fruits. So, do we say that it's because of same sunlight and same water two different fruits have come or is it because of two different types of seeds water sunlight land is same they are two different seeds so in that way water and sunlight and the land is not responsible what types of fruit grows there it depends on the seeds now extending same analogy same example if you provide a water sunlight and the fertile land only to the seed of a mango and not to the seed of cactus what will grow mango seed will grow with same sunlight same water same land if you put the seed of cactus and provide all the sunlight, water, fertile land to it, what will grow? That is will grow. From this, we can draw one beautiful example, beautiful principle in our life that what we focus on grows. So we have both the material desire, seeds of material desire and we have a seed of Krishna conscious happiness. So now Krishna is saying, if you focus on the seed of spiritual happiness, then what will grow? spiritual happiness will grow. It will grow to a certain point wherein you will become completely filled. Still, you may have those seeds of material desire. But will the seeds of material desire disturb if the happy, happy Krishna conscious happiness is growing to a certain point? No. So, what mistake would be does in our Krishna conscious journeys we tend to focus on negative things. We try to run away from Maya. Maya has been demonized, in, especially in Krishna consciousness kind of culture. Maya is demon, Maya is trying to pull you out and so we should try to run away from Maya. Is it right to run away from Maya? So what we should do? If we don't run away from Maya, what we should do then? We should not run away, we should not try to run away from Maya, we should try to catch Krishna. We should not try to run away from Maya, we should try to catch Krishna. So what's the difference between we trying to run away from Maya or we try to catch Krishna? What's the fundamental difference in that? So as a Krishna conscious aspiring devotees, our goal is not to run away from Maya. Our goal is to have Krishna. 
Because once we have Krishna, automatically why am I cannot exist here? Similarly, in this in this example, what Prabhupada is in, what Krishna is saying here, the seed of material desire. So we should try to burn the seed of material desire, or we should we try to have we should try to grow our spiritual desire. We should try to grow the spiritual desire. So, so it should become that big. Our Krishna conscious desire should become so big that our material desire will lose interest from that. And fundamentally, why we want to fulfill our material desire? Because we think there is some happiness coming out of it. Something is there that I, I, am, I, I will lack if I don't fulfill that desire. So how do you feel when you, when you have to give up something, that sense of detachment we have to develop? We fear detachment. Isn't it? We know that we should be detached. We know that we should let it go. But we fear let it go. But we fear detachment. Why do we fear detachment? Because we think that I am going to lose that happiness which is going to come out of this attachment. That intrinsic fear within all of us is the root cause of our attachment. Because we fear, okay, I will lose that happiness. If I lose that happiness, my existence is over. How would I exist at all without happiness? Like a person, like a very hungry person, he has not eaten food for so many days. He will be very attached to the stale food. He will keep all the food reserved in his cupboard. Although he is stale, that hungry man cannot give, up, cannot give up the stale food. Because he does not have the fresh food. If the hungry man gets the fresh food nicely prepared, do you think he will have any issue in giving up the stale food? So similarly, in our Krishna consciousness, we should try to grow the Krishna conscious happiness. And once we become filled in ourselves, then like a person who is completely filled by eating good food, fresh food, then he will not care or he will not have fear of losing that stale food. The financial, even if you want to extend this principle in financial domain, many people are afraid of having the debt on their head. They keep on focusing on energy, how to pay off the debt. So if a person's focus is on paying off the debt, is one idea, it's good. A second person's focus in earning more money. If you focus on earning more money, or you focus on paying off your debt, both are we fulfilling the same purpose. But which one do you think is better? Earn more money. If you earn more money, automatically I can pay off my debt. It is inclusive in that, the subset of that. But your energy, the negative inspiration will, the inspiration will be very negative. I have to pay off that debt. You will not feel that satisfaction, you will not feel that excitement and happiness in working. But if you focus your energy in earning more money, there will be more excitement, there will be more happiness, you will be more motivated. The journey will become much more smoother. So similarly, so many people have problem in giving up their anger. Anger is like that, uh, that river into the ocean. If our heart is filled with compassion, like an ocean water, then we will not have anger. So we'll not, we should not focus on removing the anger. We should focus on developing compassion for that person. The moment we develop compassion for that person, you will see anger will dissolve immediately. Like an, so we should focus on having that fulfillment of happiness, that oceanic happiness in our heart, so that this material happiness like river will not disturb us. It's like you will not hold on to candle if you have a sunlight. If you have sunlight, then you will not really hold on to the candle 
light. Similarly, the happiness which comes of the material is like a candle light. But the happiness which comes out of spiritual development is like a sunlight. There is no comparison between them all. So, if we want to give up the hate, what we should develop? We should develop appreciation, we should develop love. If you see, if you are angry, hateful towards somebody, start focusing on appreciating that person and you start being compassionate towards that person. You will see immediately your anger and your hate is dissolved. So what we focus is, it grows. If you focus on negative thing, that will grow. If you focus on positive thing, positive will grow. So our attention can be compared to sunlight, can be compared to water, can be compared to that fertile land. The fertile land can be what? Our heart. Our heart can be compared to fertile land because it has all the ingredients for it to grow and our attention can be compared to the sunlight and the water. If we hold on to those negative things in our heart, what will happen? That is going to grow. Then you will see why am I so angry? You are so angry because you are holding on to the angry thoughts about that person. We may try to repress those feelings but it is in a long term it is not going to work out. So attention, focus is so so important and we have that attention, we have that focus. It is our currency, it is our wealth. So as a person we have been given that free will that I can use the way I want, I can choose. Anger is a choice. Hate is a choice. Compassion is a choice. It's your choice. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm becoming so angry, I'm not able to have any control over myself. Still you have a choice. It's so empowering that we realize how much free will we have. It is we who has created that anger. It is we only who can dissolve it. So in that way, we will not become helpless. There is a concept known as urge surfing. So many of you would have heard about it. Urge surfing means when we become angry, we thought, we think, okay, I should not become angry, I should not become angry, I should not become angry. We try to put this emotion under the carpet, repress it. But unless you experience it within yourself, it will keep on building up. So they say you should surf through that urge of anger. So means you should allow it to come through you and let it go. Unless you allow it to flow through you, that I am not saying that you should act upon that feelings. Act, acting upon the feelings is your choice. But you can, if, unless you completely feel that anger, it will grow, grow, at one point of time, it will start fading away. So, to be able to surf through that urge, you need a lot of strength. And in our situation, we are so weak spiritually that we, we really don't have that strength to be able to face our own self, to be able to face our own anger. The moment you face your anger, the moment you bring your consciousness towards that anger, that very moment this is all dissolving off. Otherwise, if you try to suppress this anger, you may experience immediate relief. Yes, fine. But you don't keep building up in your system. So anyways, that was a different concept altogether. So now, if you come back to the same example of ocean, ocean, another way that how we can understand. How ocean is able to remain undisturbed? On the surface, there is a lot of waves which is on the oceanic, sur oceanic surface, which makes the ocean very disturbing, even though the water flows on that. But if you see, more you try to go deep into the ocean, the more undisturbed you will be from the surface disturbance. The more deep you go into the ocean, you will not feel that what is surface disturbance. You will remain unimpacted from the disturbance of the surface of the ocean if you go inside the ocean. So similarly, 
our mind may become disturbed of all those urges of the all those anger of all those difficult situation of those hate of those of those frustration of those irritation our mind may have this waves of different oceans but if we go deep into the heart become connected to ourselves go inwards more we are able to go inward the more will remain undisturbed from the disturbance of mind like the way more deep you go into the ocean more un- you remain undisturbed because of the surface disturbance similarly more you become connected to krishna in the heart more you are able to appreciate krishna more you are able to meditate on the positive aspect of thing your heart will get cling will get latched to that and you will not remain you will not become disturbed because of the three modes of material nature influence on the mind that's the real definition of sthita pragna if you see even in the 57th verse krishna has explained this concept and krishna is repeating this here in the 57th verse krishna has said in 59th verse vishaya vinivardante niraharasa dehina raso varjam roko rasopsya param drishta nivartate unless we are able to experience higher happiness we cannot give up the lower happiness unless we are content in our heart by meditating on krishna krishna happiness till that point of time it will be very difficult to to get rid of maya's influence the first mistake what we do is is to try to run away from maya because all our energy gets sucked up into that get drained so we don't have any strength any energy to be able to focus on krishna and when we are trying to fight with maya trying to fight with our, our base happiness base qualities then it is on your own strength you are trying to do that but when you try to focus on krishna try to get involved try to get krishna involved then it is a sense of surrender you are developing toward krishna i cannot handle this energy by my own i need your support it is what mayavadi does let me fight with the urges let me fight with the maya let me try to fight with those all those kind of things our concept is not to fight with maya we cannot fight with maya krishna says mat chitta sarva durgaani mat prasada parishyasi it is by my consciousness you will be able to overcome all those difficulties krishna is not saying okay you we can do it if we think that we can do it by ourselves it is it is trying to do something which you are not empowered for for an example if an ant think oh i have to do some great service for krishna let's say ant become devotee and i want to create one universe krishna will think i have not empowered you to create one universe how can you create one universe i have empowered brahma ji to create one universe not you so based upon my empowerment you act sometimes i think it is my responsibility to do certain big things yeah you may take up by yourself but unless you are empowered to take up that responsibility you will not be able to fulfill that like the ant can take up the responsibility of making an universe creating one universe but krishna is not krishna is not empowered the ant and krishna because he has not empowered the ant uh, and krishna is also not expecting the ant to create one universe similarly if maya is so huge and krishna is not expecting us to fight alone with the, along with the maya so what krishna is saying you come with me i will take care of the maya you don't worry so our focus should be on meditating on krishna on taking krishna shelter and growing the krishna conscious happiness then only we can do that and sometimes people may think okay i don't have sufficient activity sufficient engagement sufficient way by which i can really be engaged in krishna service if you see it is really not necessary to be always being active to be able to feel krishna's presence it's more of a meditative happiness for an example let us try to think of this example and try to meditate on this you see what i am talking about you will get even glimpses into it if you see krishna says in bhagavad gita raso ham apso konteya that i am the taste of water if you see if you are thirsty if i give you milk if i give you juice 
if i give you any uh, any kind of uh, energy drink will your quench where will your thirst be quenched it is only with the help of water you can quench your thirst there is specific satisfaction we get from the water any specific which can't be found anywhere and what does krishna says i am that taste in the water that satisfaction what we gain after drinking water is coming from krishna just meditate on that that satisfaction if you see the fluid if you don't have oil if you don't have water into some vegetables will you get any taste out of it even vegetables krishna says it is through moon the vegetables get their taste and moon is my energy so when you taste the fruit the juicy fruit that rasa is coming from that satisfaction is coming from simply by meditating on this point that how powerful krishna is that he has infused the taste that satisfaction that rasa that energy into the substances vegetables and water that's so why we as soon as we think we see water we can think of krishna because we are talking about river and ocean let us try to dwell more on water so another satis another quality of water is it softens the things in the bhagavatam it is said anything what water comes in touch with it softens down if you see if you keep water for some time at any place that that substance contains will start softening down or something right similarly krishna's touch is like touch of water softening touch if we keep krishna always in the heart if we keep krishna always in our consciousness you would see our consciousness our mind starts softening down like an impact of water that is connected to the water another point what you can think of you can visualize it as the flow of water liquidity of water you when you swim you see that is water is so soft so liquid you can swim across it we cannot swim on the earth if earth you have to swim in the earth or in that substance of earth you cannot do that you can swim in the water you can swim you cannot swim in the fire also you can swim in the water because of that liquidity so if we appreciate the liquidity of water and it is only liquid water which is more beautiful than a stagnant water if this is a lake which is stagnant will not be that beautiful as the river flowing flowing river would be beautiful because the nature of water is exhibited there the flow of water similarly krishna's heart keeps flowing towards his devotees krishna's feeling are always drawing towards devotees krishna is always being grateful towards his devotees so every service we render to krishna krishna is very very grateful you can say how i krishna is grateful if you see the gratefulness itself is rooted in remembrance of what that person has done for me what is gratefulness remembering what other person has done for me and if i remember what other person has done for me i am being honest if i am not honest i will not remember the what that person has done for me only when i am honest i can think of what that person has done to me and from that naturally appreciation will flow so grateful we say we have to be grateful is a great actually it is not a great quality it is a great quality but it is rooted in being honest if we are honest then we will remember what other person is doing for us will be grateful automatically so gratefulness is rooted in honesty and krishna is the supreme honest personality of god supremely honest is and because he is supremely honest that's why he is remembering all the services we are rendering to him that's why he is very grateful that like a water like like a flow of water flowing towards ocean similarly our heart should keep on flowing towards krishna experiencing that krishna is being very grateful and how is he showing his gratefulness by giving us more knowledge by giving us more mercy by giving us more happiness so any amount of happiness we experience by doing service to krishna it is because of krishna's grateful nature that he want to give it to you also now just focus on this quality of 
whenever you think of water the liquidity of water you should think of krishna okay krishna's heart is flowing towards me i'm rendering service to him okay now fine so krishna's body is very soft water is very soft in nature right even krishna's body is very soft if you see the, the 10th canto of bhagavatam it says that just by the simple touch of any leaf on the krishna's body krishna's color changes is so soft like when you go when you try to shake hand with somebody you really don't feel that softness because we have that bones because our bones are required to support my body but bones are not required to support krishna's body so krishna's body does not have bones it is soft in nature the moment anything touches krishna's body its color changes it gets soft so whenever you see the softness of this world you should remember krishna's softness again come back to the water although water is very soft but same water can produce electricity with the force of its kinetic energy even the dissolution of happens because of water when water become ferocious what happens dissolution same water can create life and same water can break life similarly the old krishna is very very soft but he can act like a thunderbolt on his enemies the krishna's body 16 year old body is very very soft for the gopis but when krishna was hitting kamsa it was not that soft for kamsa it was like thunderstorm storm acting upon him we say dual nature of waves water is a dual nature soft and very hard because the force of kinetic energy of water which it gushes with it can just blast it everything similarly when krishna shows is another part of him it can just devour everything all his enemies so we should allow krishna to act krishna to act allow his action of softness in our heart and we should allow krishna's hardness to act upon our mind which can devastate all the anarthas of our mind you should know when krishna is acting upon you he is having that dual nature we think okay if krishna is not krishna is not remembering krishna is nature like a dual nature sometime krishna forgets me sometime krishna remembers me when i am in good time or oh, krishna is remembering me krishna is giving me mercy when i am going through the difficulty krishna is has forgotten me is krishna also like that that he keeps forgetting and keep remembering us no even though when he is giving you difficulty it is for your own good he is giving you and he is holding he is holding on to you he is holding your hands so even though we are in difficulty we should know that krishna is still there in different feature krishna is there if you study virat rupa of krishna it is said that the affection is sitting on krishna's smile the affection of the entire world if you if you collect all the affection of this world it is a smile of krishna's virat rupa so whenever we see krishna's smile we should know that krishna is showing affection towards us think like this remember krishna like this whenever you see deities krishna smiling face or oh, krishna is showing his graceful affection towards me another example it is said in virat rupa feature that this trees this leaves and this you know big big trees that we have in the in the forest they like hair of krishna's body of the virat rupa these trees are like hair of krishna's virat rupa so now when any insects goes through my hand i will feel it right any bug any insect is walking crawling on my hand similarly when you walk in the nature you should feel that i am walking on krishna's body now you feel connected to krishna okay i am walking on krishna's surface krishna's body krishna krishna virat rupa krishna is holding on to me i am holding on to krishna so like this there are many many beautiful points what are mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavad gita so if we take those points as a seed form 
and we keep giving our attention our feelings towards it same statement will keep on growing your krishna conscious happiness and once that krishna conscious happiness is growing automatically the urges to satisfy your desire will reduce so we are not working upon the material desire we are only working upon the spiritual desire if you keep on increasing that automatically relatively it will become very small you may have both x x if you keep on growing the x to 100 x it remain x relatively it become very small and you have x you keep growing that even though you may have krishna conscious happiness that is x but your material desire happiness is going to 100 x that fulfill that urge to fulfill that desire that will remain that will go away from your life that will become very like a fading effect so with this we conclude if anybody have any doubts any questions maybe you can ask. yeah urge surfing so what happens once we go through that anger you would see that anger will reflect in different aspects different component of your body it will reflect in your body itself in a certain part of your body you will feel that anger once you become angry your hands are shaking your stomach will start having butterflies your heart will start racing there will be some symptoms in your body physical body of that anger first locate that Okay, where in the body I am feeling that anger? In the hand I am feeling that anger. Okay, let me focus on that. Let me feel it completely. If it is feeling in your stomach, give all your attention to that stomach area. If you are feeling in the heart, only focus on your heart. Just be concentrated towards your heart. So when that anger, you are giving attention to that anger in your body. Slowly, slowly, it starts going away from your from your body itself. and then you can feel that in an energy form because energetically we feel it somewhere in the body again it can be corresponding part of that particular body part let's say in the heart you are feeling it in that heart component you can soothe it by inhaling the deep breath and by giving your focus to that and that force of anger will also give you certain thoughts oh he is like this he is like that he did this to me he was always beating me up he is always scolding me he is always doing that allow it to experience don't don't counteract at that point of time we have a very rational mind we always keep on counteract oh this anger is not good to feel let me not feel anger so this person is good at that point of time when you are doing that earth surfing after that once the emotions are calmed down our logical part we can work with that that's a different story but when we are angry though our logical mind will not work so we have to first calm down the emotions then only we can logically think then only we can have that compassionate thought then only we can have all those uh, appreciation thought but at that point of time without speaking to the person find your own secluded find your own space wherein you are not disturbed by anybody and let it go out the different ways of venting out your thinking maybe in your mind or maybe you can just write it down as it is don't put any rational into it oh i should not be feeling angry it's bad to feel anger not like this i am feeling angry on this person because he did this 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 so that venting process through different process through different ways maybe just speaking to somebody having somebody can hold that unjudgmental space for you where in somebody is not judging you it can flow it's like ad surfing or you can journal it it is ad surfing the thinking and the emotions i am feeling bad okay yes i am feeling angry i am feeling irritated recognize that no i am not feeling angry i am not angry i know you are becoming angry but you not you don't accept it i am feeling angry but the moment you accept that anger slowly slowly to lose that power from you because the whole idea that negative emotions can control us only in darkness anger can control us only till the time anger is not recognized 
if you don't recognize certain habits in us they'll keep on working through the darkness because dark energy can only work through darkness not through light but when you're doing earth surfing what you're doing is you're subtly bringing that light into that area and when you're bringing that light into that area you will see that it will lose its strength from you it will lose that grip from you there's a meaning of earth surfing it can be applied to any lust anger greed pride everything you just need some practice to perform that does it make anybody else would like to ask me okay so let us uh, focus on uh, i think we are already running uh, running out of time we'll be focusing on aarti now so i just give you that ideas how you can try to focus on the sound because it is said that krishna says in propa says in one of the purport of bhagavatam that the sound of hari krishna mahamantra is as sweet as the flute of sound coming from flute of krishna so how the gopis becomes mad when they hear the flute of krishna sound of flute of krishna propa says hari krishna mahamantra is a sound of flute of krishna so when you be here hari krishna mahamantra appreciate okay that sound is same as the sound coming from flute of krishna so with this meditation try to be the more immersive in kirtan and you can experience that happens many many fold in the mind you appreciate it with the tongue we can speak with the ears we can hear but with the mind we can appreciate but when we when we appreciate with the mind you would see that happiness bounces up 100 times that is amplification of spiritual happiness with the help of mind by appreciating it by meditating on those points let us try to do let us try to bring it in practice in the last in the next 30 minutes and we can focus toward the dt now and we'll start the hari krishna thank you very much Thank <laughs> you.